Hey guys, welcome to Kit Talk. It's part review, part modeling explanation, but mostly it's just rambling. Hey guys and gals, welcome back to another episode of Kit Talk. Uh, in this episode, we're going to take a look at the real grade Exia along with the P Bandai Exia Repair Add on Pack. Right off the bat, I'm going to mention that the P Bandai uh, Repair Add on Pack is one of the most expensive kits in terms of dollars per unit. At only 21 pieces and a cost ranging of from $30 to $50 in the U.S., depending on the seller, um, the kit really isn't worth it in my opinion. Um, however, as a fan of the design, I decided to pick it up and build it anyways. Um, if you are a fan of the Exia Repair, I would recommend checking out the Master Grade Exia Ignition Mode instead. Uh, this kit typically only costs $20 to $25 more than the base model Master Grade Exia and also includes parts to build either version of the kit, as well as um, a set of green LEDs for the front and back of the GM drive, as well as fully chrome parts for the, uh, the blades of the GM swords and the muzzle and a few other odds and ends. So let's take some time and talk about the kit and what I did to it. Um, the first thing you may notice is that this kit is missing its entire left arm, and that's part of the design. Uh, in its place we have these two large molded cape pieces here, which, similar to the way the Master Grade is designed, are fitted on to two ball joints. Um, what I have generally noticed with these parts is that the ball joint uh, connection itself is very weak, and the type of plastic that the um, cape is made out of tends to um, be very prone to um, stretching or deforming, which results in this generally not being a great connection. Um, you generally want to fit the cape into a certain position so it looks like there's still something underneath of it, but most of the time this kind of just folds into the body and it just looks kind of terrible. Um, <clears throat> while on the subject of the, the cape, uh, this is something that I did shade uh, both highlights and lowlights uh, to reflect the different folds within the material. Um, and then I also dry brushed and applied a weather wash to it to match the, uh, the other elements of the kit. Okay, so moving on, just rotate the kit around to the back. Um, as you may be aware of the XA's design, it normally has beam sabers uh, that hang off the back skirts as well as the shoulder here. I omitted the one in the shoulder entirely, and for the ones in the back skirts, I actually sanded it down. So normally there's just a peg here that holds the beam saber in. By sanding it down, I wanted it to look like it was maybe magnetized onto the back or something else, so it just didn't look like a peg hanging out. Uh, the repair version of this kit basically emits all weapons except for the main uh, GN sword on the right arm, uh, due just to the, the lore of the series when the kit shows up. Um, speaking of which, uh, this is the saber design. I followed a very similar weathering pattern uh, on the sword that I followed throughout the rest of the body, where it's um, painted uh, black around the blades to look like it was burnt or carbon scoring, or whatever you want to call it. And then I also applied a weathering wash to it and did some other techniques um, to make the blade a little more beaten looking. Um, this kit in general has problems holding up the, uh, the GN sword just due to its weight. And this sits on a simple hinge down here so the sword tends to do that where it's very floppy. Um, you can certainly strengthen the joint but that's something to watch out for in either version. Um, uh, the full X here, the repair mode. Uh, just due to the weight of the blade, it's going to do that. Um, just like the Master Grade as well, uh, due to the weight here, um, it tends to make the kit very lopsided, so it will tend to you know, fall forward if the blade's all the way out, or, or however you have it posed. Uh, the blade does fold down, there's a little beam gun here at the, the tip there. Unlike the Master Grade where it has um, its own little barrel nozzle type setup um, that's chromed. This one is uh, fairly bland and you also have a very obvious seam line running down the, uh, the side of the, the blade right here. 
Alright, now that I've had an opportunity to remove the main weapon as well as the cloth, you can get a better idea of uh, the weathering and battle damage I did on the model kit. I'm going to start with the, the first step of the process, which was to physically damage the kit. Um, this is a technique that I typically use on my weathered models just to give it more of an impact. Um, and I usually reference what we know from the series that the mobile suit comes from. So from um, Gundam 00, we know that the Gundams are, at least in the beginning, like really advanced compared to what else is out there in the world. And we don't really know uh, what the composites would be like in terms of today's materials. So treating it like the super advanced composites that they are, I decided not to really beat them up all that much outside of what was already included with the... Um, the damage of uh, the repair kit. Uh, a lot of what I did is things like these light little gouges on the hips and legs, um, feet even, same thing with the arms, the cockpit hatch. I, I further damaged some of the components around the, the head. Um, this V-fin here is actually not the included broken V-fin that comes with the kit. I actually took the, the standard Exia V-fin and kind of cut it a little bit um, further up the, the the point, so that way there's there's more material there. It fit better with the the overall shape of the head damage. Um, this uh, part of the side skirt here is normally emitted, and instead I decided to leave it but break it off further up, just so it looked more complete. Because otherwise you have just stuff that's missing um, over here, and it just looks kind of weird. And you can see I, I included the damage pretty much all throughout the design here um, with more attention to the damage on this side of the body including uh, breaking off the little antenna up here. And this is normally whole, but I decided since, hey, it's missing half of its upper body, you might as well damage that as well. Uh, the other clavicle antenna here is completely missing. Uh, the black marks that you see, the little burn marks or carbon scoring, whatever you want to call them, um, these were accomplished by lightly spraying uh, dark lacquer paint uh, on these areas and then going back over them with a paper towel with lighter fluid on it. Um, so long as the lacquer doesn't set, you can use this technique to remove some of the lacquer. So what you're left with is uh, a lighter fade around the wound, but then a really dark mark within it. So it's it's basically a reverse wash, but we're not taking everything away from the the exterior of the of the um, of the armor uh, like we would with an enamel, because enamel comes off very easily with uh, lighter fluid, and the lacquer is a little more resistant. So the way I applied the weathering wash to this kit is something that I hadn't seen anyone else do before, so I'll cover it really quickly. I use Tamiya's uh, panel lining accent color for a lot of my washes now just because it's, it's very convenient to use. And the way I applied it to this kit is I actually just took it, uh, added a little more enamel thinner to it, and put it directly into my airbrush and then sprayed the whole kit, which gave it this very kind of ugly uh, gray appearance to it. And I, I should also mention that it was applied after the kit had already been top coated, so it had a rough surface that would hold the, the panel lining wash better. Then after allowing that, that wash to dry for, I don't know, an hour or so, I went back over it with uh, paper towel and lighter fluid and started removing it. With that, we're going to wrap up this Kit Talk episode for the Real Grade Exia Repair. This is a model that I really enjoyed building, and I really like the finished product, but it's also not a kit I could easily recommend. Uh, there already exists a great version of the Exia Repair Mode, which is the MG Exia Ignition Mode. It includes all the parts to build the Exia either way, as well as some other nice features. And to be honest, it probably costs less than this model. Speaking of which, if you happen to like the design of this kit, it's currently for sale. If you happen to be a master or perfect grade patron, uh, through my Patreon page, you can pick this kit up at a pretty solid discount as well. If you haven't already, please consider looking at my Patreon page. There are multiple levels starting as little as a dollar. 
Uh, every, uh, every dollar you support goes a long way to helping me produce more content, buy different equipment to produce better videos, and generally just make more stuff for you guys to look at. If you haven't already, also check out my blogger page. There are over 100 completed kits, tutorials, and other neat things for you to look at. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching. See you around.